Today I'm talking with Penny Pepper, uh, one of the illustrious writers associated with Together and Together TV. Penny, I understand you've been nominated for a rather prestigious writing award. Would you like to tell the audience all about it? I would, Robin, and thank you for inviting me on for this little interview. It's always a pleasure to work for Together TV. I'm one of the 10 winners to win a Hemingway Shorts competition. And that is named after the great American writer, Ernest Hemingway. I'm absolutely, well, I can't, I've, I'm even lost for words and that doesn't happen very often <laughs> to me. But um, it, I just submitted a piece. I saw that it was available. It was open to writers from all, all around the globe. And um, I sent a little piece in that was uh, a few years old. I just, and lo and behold, I'm going to be in this anthology. It's it, it's very exciting. I don't think it's entirely sunk in even now. How wonderful it is. And also, you know, allow myself to feel proud and what effect it has um, to be associated with the Ernest sort of Hemingway name. I do think, I think the anthology is coming out uh, early June. Um, there will be an ebook version available. I, but yeah, and um, I'll tell you a little bit about the piece because I'm not allowed to read it yet. It's called Hat Man and Brian, and it's about a character called Jane who's a disabled woman and she's in New York. And that's, this is where the inspiration came from. I went to New York in 2011 to do a piece of work with um, American friends, disabled friends in New York and with Matt Fraser, who I hope everybody knows in disability land. But, um, and that, that was at um, a bookshop and I did a reading. So it's kind of like a full circle. But I had this experience on the bus. I'd use the buses a lot in New York. And they are, in some ways, they're better than what we have because the bus drivers are much more on your side <laughs> rather than sort of ignoring you or grunting at you. And they, they, were, they will slay the entire bus if there's any grumbling. You go on by a lift and you are clamped in. And that, and I will say there was no nonsense from the passengers. It was like completely accepted, integrated into everyday life, if you like. But the bus stops, the bus driver gets you on. And these are the normal public buses. There were these two old, oldish men having this strange chat about maps like they'd been friends forever and they were having this sort of slightly argumentative um, chat. But then they saw me and one thing, everyone knows me that I'm a bit of a peacock and I show off with my clothes and I make statements, you know, about how I look. So I had flowers in my hair and my friend in New York said, you will be stared at, but it won't it won't be nasty and i did feel that but these two two elderly men actually said hey that's a pretty flower but it just stirred the um an inspiration about this you know the the stories within people's lives yeah and i created this piece it's not very long it is what's called a flash um a flash fiction which i'm quite good at and I, I'm owning that today. I am good at it. I've won quite a few prizes for my flash fiction because you have to grasp an essence of something, an essence of a moment in time, still tell a story, but leave the leave your reader wanting more. So they're good for beginners, but they're not always as easy as they seem. One reason I'm so extra, extra, extra excited, and I am, I'm going to just, it sounds a bit lazy, but let me read um, what I put in my newsletter. This is what the judge's comment was. The judges read and evaluated many submissions. Your piece stood out for both its choice of subject and the quality of its prose. The, the other thing I must add, Robin, is that 
And as I say here, even more importantly, I'm delighted that this provides an international platform for my work in telling the often unheard and neglected disability story. And that is possibly the most important aspect for me. This is what I've done all my life. This is my passion. And it's to tell the, the true, contrary, celebratory, amazing story of us. We're not one story. We're multiple stories like any other community. And even now, we all know how little those stories are seen and heard. And that's amazing, uh, Penny, and, and to be, you know, a winner in such a, a prestigious contest. So, you know, again, congratulations from Together. Thank you. Now, we know we can't hear the short story yet that's uh, in the prize, but I'd love for you to finish this interview with reading one of your other sh amazing short stories. Thank you, Robin. So this is called Breathe in the Water. They don't talk about the barnacles in the books. They crust on my aged tail like the corns on my old nana, who used to have them when she lived on the dry. My hair is no longer a fable, not a wild plethora, a luscious siren whirl around me as I move. It's all strings and tattered weed, and it tangles me at the slightest turn. When I first came to the water, it was new and unexpected. It took me a while to adjust, but at least Finn was here. He scooped me, pulled me into his strong arms and cocooned me in his own ebullient locks that moved with the tides, issued seahorses and sea snails from the twists when he shook with laughter. I recall my first sea day, a death of one kind and a birth of another. The cliffs were not so high, but sufficient for the closure I required when I jumped. How cold it was, a terrible shock and the urge to fight was strong. I didn't break at once as I'd expected, but bobbed and rolled and argued with the sea. But then I let go. I breathed in the taste of salt, dragged in that cold surging elements into my young lungs. I felt water possess me and ravish my young bones. Yet a spark came, a noise of lightest gurgled laughter, and a woman of the water lifted me up and stroked my hair. And Finn, he came from the dry too. His beginning was as sorrowful as mine when his father took him in his wheelchair to the dock on a night so dark even the eyes of owls couldn't judge him. His father soothed him, sang a soft song and spun words about easing pain and suffering as he tipped his son into the deep. The father walked away from his son's cries, his desperate splashes, and gave him away as easily as a casual stone dropped to the depths. The waves loved Finn and carried him to new parents. They caught hold of his weak legs, grasped him and shook their sleek heads in shame at what the dry folk do to those they deem different. As was I in my own way. Emotions out on my skin, raw from my eyes, bleeding fear and joy from my heart in equal measure. I did not belong with the dull every day on the dry and it was in the sea I found my home to love and live for many moons and many seasons, travelling with the many and consumed with love of Finn. It is said by the elders and the whales that when we die, we melt into the sea. We become it. It becomes us. And as long as there are seas and stars and lost folk who want to believe in the extraordinary, we will prevail. I breathe in the water and no fin, gone since spring high tides, is within me again. Our children swam far to find lovers of their own long ago. And I know it is my time to rest in the waves, to smile as I dissolve, slow and soft, 
watched by red crabs and rainbow coral into the essence of my love, my darling ocean love. Our two different troubled streams, now one, loved, absorbed by the accepting sea.